All right. So just because I call this layer refined paint does not mean it needs to be refined. And if you feel like you're tightening up, which I often do, and just working a little bit more like a machine than a creative artist, you can always just go to a bigger brush. And if you're interested in building lots of different layers, you can do that. You don't, you don't have to only do it on a, a shape paint layer and then a refined paint layer, but just lock your layers as you go. But I, I like doing this because I can kind of see how it all comes together. Right? As I build it, I can see how that refined paint really starts to give me control over what I'm looking at. And it's really hard to keep colors fresh in digital painting. They all want to always want to kind of regress towards pretty boring colors. So that's why those inspiration are pretty important to me. And if you see that you are ignoring certain areas, like I'm ignoring the jacket, so remember to kind of touch everything somewhat. Now, there's a few reasons for using the tablet for digital painting and why everyone uses tablets or Cintiqs for digital painting. Pressure sensitivity is the main reason. Think how hard it would be to be locked into only one brush size as you're painting and have to change that each time you want to change brush size. But the other is that painting is inherently directional. So it's kind of sweeps and arcs. So unlike doing digital inking or line art where you're trying to get really smooth, controlled direction with your, your mark making, in digital painting, you're often just trying to mimic the direction of your subject matter. So if I'm doing his forehead, for instance, and I pick a color, let's do a kind of a gray green. When I go across the forehead, I want to go in the direction of the wrinkles of the skin, right? So that each stroke reinforces that shape. If I was Van Gogh, these would be big blobs of paint that create ridges, that cast shadows, that make it look like the sky is swirling or that the, the rows of agriculture in the spring are blooming. But you can see how much that directionality with a brush that shows direction because it's textured really changes the, the feeling of the paint. I want a little bit of this kind of street art aesthetic. Big swaths of color that, that I can cut out or rearrange later. And all of it done at, I'm around an 80% opacity. The lower opacity you work, the longer it will take to build it up. But if you, if I used 100% opacity, then I wouldn't have any benefit from the painting underneath. And 
And if I just turn those off, I can see the places I still need to cover it with my refined paint layer. And this is kind of my first pass at the refined paint before I start what's called rendering or modeling the form more directly. all right i'm building it i've almost got all of it covered with my refined paint you can see all the white splotches coming through but that's filled in by my base coat layer And I just got to keep bringing in that texture and those intentions with my large brush here. And as I'm painting over them, even at 80%, they are creating new tones, new colors that I can use as I keep refining. I think I want to build up the size of the hair a little bit more. And if I feel like I'm running out of space, I can always increase my canvas size. So I'm going to grow up from this corner and I'm going to go ahead and make it 12 by 14. Give myself lots of space, then fill in that background with white. All right, and if I need to, I can unlock all the paint layers and then just move them, whoops, select them all so they all move together. And I can even grow them. This is helpful because it can soften all of your edges a little bit. Okay, now at this stage, it's a good time to kind of play with your proportions because now I can clearly see where the nose is, the mustache, the bottom lip with the open mouth, the hairline, the ear, the neck. And so what I'm gonna do is actually turn off everything but my painting, right? And then I'm gonna hold down Option and say Layer, Merge, visible. So it combines all of those up on top. Then I'm going to move all of these building layers into a folder. That's just how I do it. I'm going to lock that, lock my background again, and then turn it off. <clears throat> so what do I have? I have it all in one layer. Why is that helpful? Because now I can transform that. And I can 
trying to get the eyes in place. And this is where if you're doing a portrait, you want to pay attention to what's called likeness. So it actually resembling a person, even if it's a caricature, right? So it's the triangle of the eyes to the nose that matter most. So I need those eyes to feel like they're lined up correctly. And that the proportion's right to the nose and then to the chin. It's kind of squeezing them in. Now that feels a little bit more right to me. Push it all back a little. And then if I turn on the group underneath, you can see how much that changed from this to that, right? So this is the advantage of digital. You can kind of find your better edges as you go. Until even eventually, I might just make that my new base layer and just merge it all together. And I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to unlock this and now just merge that together. And I'm going to call this my base, base paint. <clears throat> and then lock it. So now that I've kind of filled everything in, let's try a different background besides white. Let's duplicate the white background and then fill it with middle gray, just like we did for digital coloring. That will help me see the lights and darks. And now, <clears throat> excuse me, let me build a new refined paint layer where I'm going to actually start modeling form. So I have my navigator open, which you'll find under window and options. Come on. So the navigator right here, that will show me the whole image. And whenever I want to zoom in and move around, I can just use that without having to change tool. I don't even have to hit command plus or minus, right? And if I zoom in to 100%, you'll see my actual brush strokes, right? Eventually, for a finished digital painting, those all have to kind of fill in and finish up. So right now I'm going to zoom into about here. The navigator looks like a little uh, nautical steering wheel. And I'm now going to change my brush, use the same brush, but I'm going to change it to be smaller. And I'm going to change it to be less opaque. And now I'm going to start modeling a little bit. So to do that, I still have all of my different versions. But I'm going to use this brush. And this just takes a lot of time and layering up. But over the top, I'm going to start modeling in the, the actual places of the skin tone define it separately from the hairline, the edges of things like the nose, I'm going to model in the eyebrows. Because now I've messed around with building enough color and paint surface that I kind of know where these things go. So this is what I'm now painting versus this, right? And if I'm worried about losing by merging all of those intermediate beginning layers, I can always save it as a copy so that I have those layers in my last PSD. So now I'm saving it as a new named PSD. It will just have copy at the end. But this is where I start doing the shading 